Hi, I'm Linda. Glad to have you back. Today I finished up a woodsy scene. A little cabin nestled uh, in the woods far back in the canyons. I don't know where it would be. Maybe Colorado. Um, not sure, but it's got a glowing sunrise coming through the canyon. Uh, some beautiful evergreens, some mossy stones, and a little stream, waterfall. Steps going down, even a little pier down there. A great place for fishing. It was awesome to paint. I really I love doing this one. It's got lots of beautiful, warm colors. So get your paints out, pause and paint with me. So let's get started. So here are the paints I used. Acrylics, burnt umber, red, can yellow. Windsor and Newton oils, liquid clear, titanium white, black, phthalo blue, Prussian blue, Van Dyke Brown, Burnt Sienna, Staff Green, Yellow Ochre, and Cad Yellow. So I started out with a clean, dry canvas, white canvas. And I'm using the acrylic, burnt, uh, umber. And I'm just, I etched in the side of a canyon on the left. Just kind of brushed it in the shape. And the shape of uh, where the water's going to be. And then there's a little dip for a waterfall. Took a fan brush, same color, burnt umber with a touch of red, and did some pine trees way back in the distance. Uh, you don't have to be real fussy. It's, it's going to be uh, uh, covered up. A lot of it's going to be covered up with uh, the yellow, so you won't see a whole lot of it, just a little bit. So now I'm taking, I let that dry, the acrylic dry totally, and now I'm taking some uh, clear liquid clear. I'm going over the whole thing, a very, very light coat um, of liquid clear. And then I'll be gently going over the top with a blue shop towel just to take a little of that excess paint off. Just making sure I get it all over, top and bottom. And there's the shop towel, just gently taking the excess off. So now I'm going right into titanium white. Little X strokes in the middle. There where the sun's going to be, the brightest. Wants some really bright sunlight right in the middle there. And now I went into cad yellow. And I'm going around that centerpiece, just around it. There's little X's right onto the tops of those trees, kind of in the middle, kind of all over in there. Brushing down onto the side of the canyon rocks. And I'm adding a little yellow ochre very top, just blending in a little bit, softening some of that yellow up, making sure I, I want a really nice golden glow, that's what I, I'm striving for here. And some of that sunlight's going to hit uh, the sides of those, outside of those rocks too, the canyon, so get a little of that yellow on there. And I'm taking a clean, dry brush, and I'm just, just blending the heck out of it. I'm just blend, blend, blend. I'm just really pushing that paint into the canvas. Because I want to soften that up. Going in with a little extra titanium white now on a clean, dry brush. And putting in a little extra brightness right there where the sun is hitting. And you can pull down with your brush to make, make some little rays. So now I'm going into a little bit of uh, burnt sienna, a tiny bit of uh, Van Dyke, just tiny. And I'm just going over a little bit uh, on the distant pines, just beyond that waterfall, just ever so lightly. Going in, tapping in with a clean brush, fine brush, a little uh, cad yellow and white, very light.
and I'll be accenting some of those uh, trees in the back distance there where we just put some brush and trees. In fact, I'm going to put in a little pine tree way in the distance, just really bright. A couple of them, actually. Just tapping with the corner of my brush. They're so far in the distance, it's just, after we get done, you're going to hardly notice them, but you'll see that they, there is something there. Taking my uh, palette knife, accentuating the uh, trunks a little bit, so I'm going into a little bit of the darker uh, Van Dyke Brown, just pushing upwards with a fan brush, creating some uh, oh, little bushes at the base of the ones way in the back. Lifting up, creating some little bits of brush. And I'm going into my burnt sienna uh, and creating some bushes, just a different layer of color back there. Tapping with a one inch, kind of going uphill. Dipping in a little bit of that uh, yellow for accent. Same, just accenting the tips of those trees way in the back ever so lightly. And I'm taking a palette knife with some dark brown, Van Dyke brown with a touch of black. And maybe even a touch of uh, burnt sienna. I'm just creating a ridge, a rock ridge back there. Just uh, the tops of the trees are just barely going to show. So, But I figure I'm going to put a ridge back there. Just shaping just the tops. We're going to have uh, evergreens right in front of that. A lot of that is going to be covered up, but I'm going all the way down. Uh, not quite all the way, but because there's going to be some bushes there at the end of uh, that rock formation. There I'm putting in a little bit with uh, yellow ochre and a touch of um, the burnt sienna, just very, very light. Just going to go over that. That's a big old rock right there. So I'm just taking, I took a piece of uh, um, paper towel. I just kind of pulled that color down over the top of that rock. Okay, so now I'm going to accent the tops of those, that ridge, with a little bit of burnt sienna and maybe even just a touch of yellow and red because the sunlight's hitting the tops of those that ridge we just want a little bit of color on the top so now I'm just tipping the very uh, edges of those uh, canyon rocks with sunlight, and that would be with cad yellow and a touch of white. Just putting a little of that uh, sunlight on those rocks. And I am putting a tiny bit of red along with that yellow, just to put a little color in there. And with the uh, fan brush, dipped in a little bit of uh, Van Dyke Brown, touch, maybe a touch of, uh, of the Burnt Vienna. I'm just putting a little darkness along the uh, left of that canyon wall. Let's put a little dark color in there. So now I'm going with my a one inch. I've got a little bit of yellow ochre on that. I'm just going right underneath where the waterfall is going to end, 
pulling some of that yellow ochre into uh, this little stream. And I'm staying back and forth. Tapping my brush and bringing in some of that, uh, just a little bit of that yellow ochre in there. So we'll be putting other colors on top, but I want to make sure I've got some yellow in there or the caramel color. Putting a little bit of the, even a touch of burnt sienna in that. I think yellow ochre probably would be enough. But So then I'm going into sap green. And just going to brush about halfway down on that stream. Sap green and a touch of uh, Prussian blue. Just pulling some of that blue in there. Back and forth. And uh, a lot down more at, at the bottom. Because that's going to be the darkest area. Just go right up underneath uh, the boulders there on the left. going to have a little water underneath those boulders, so um, brush kind of into the water there, blending it in. Very dark down there. And pulling in a little bit of the brown in there too. Just blending that in. Because it's shallow in places. Alright, so I've got uh, another dark color. Sap green, Prussian blue, and a little bit of uh, Van Dyke. Very, very dark. And I'm going to just put in where I'm going to have some evergreen. Uh, trees. I'm going to put the trunks in first so I know so I know where they are. So I'm coming out from the right end, oh, maybe an inch and a half. Just pulling down, not all the way, because there's going to be a little cabin right below there. Where I ended there, right above. Uh, the green. Okay, so I'm going to have a second one, which I'm using a little filbert brush, just, just to show me where I'm going to have those trees. And there's another third one that's going to be off to the left. There we go, right up, just a smaller one. It's going to be kind of close to that big old boulder that's right next to the, the waterfall. Going into that dark color, very dark color, Prussian, Van Dyke Brown, and a little bit of, uh, oh, probably uh, red would work too, just, just so that it's really, really dark. And I'm just going to tap in uh, with my fan brush. I know you're not going to see it very well, but just tap it in, because we'll be putting a couple other colors on top of this, but I want to fill that in with uh, branches and so you, so you know where the tree is. you got the trunk. So we're just doing side to side, zigzag. You don't want to leave any open areas because of the white background, but once we get that in there, they will pop out. I'm going to pretty much go uh, not all the way down because we're going to put some uh, brown brown bushes in there. It's going to be a cabin sitting underneath. And then we're going to do the other tree, just the smaller one. They're going to be angled a little bit different. Same with the little one uh, in the far in the toward the middle there. It's kind of hard to gauge. But, and then put the little one down next to uh, that big old boulder, kind of at an angle. So now I'm taking my one inch, I've got Van Dyke Brown with a touch of 
a yellow ochre and a touch of burnt sienna. It's going to make some bushes back there underneath those uh, evergreens. Tapping in some land, kind of brush across. Just tapping some bushes. Okay, I'm going into a little bit of making kind of an olive, light olive green. And that's with a little bit of sap green and some yellow. And that is the color we're going to make some branches with on top of those right over what we just made, evergreens. Smaller fan brush. Load it up pretty good. Start with the corner and just shape out your trees. You know where the big one is. Go side to side. And you can leave some of those dark areas in there. We'll be putting another highlight color on top of this. <coughs> Excuse me. It's nice to have uh, oh, a couple, three layers of uh, color in your trees. Gives it density and uh, just makes it look nice. Just here and there, and that other little one there, kind of in the center, along that boulder. Do some touches on that one, too. I'm going to figure out where my cabin's going to be. So I'm going to kind of scratch out where the roof is going to be. Just pull down with the palette knife, take off some of that excess paint. You can shape, shape it the way you want to. Right now would be a good time. Pull down a lot of that paint, get that paint off. You can shape it really good now. You can see if you, uh, you won't make a mistake. If uh, you don't like it, then reshape it. Because there's no real paint on that cabin as of yet. Just kind of getting an idea where I want to put it. In the meantime, I'm going to put some little uh, a brush back there. I've got my fan brush tapped in a little bit of yellow, yellow ochre. I'm just making some uh, little, oh, a little, some brush there alongside of where the cabin's going to be. So now I'm working my up on the other side there. I'm going to accent this huge rock that's going to be uh, in front of the back one there. I'm going to make that one real dark. Just really dark, Van Dyke Brown. Just putting the base color for, uh, for um, so my moss that, moss that we're going to put on there is going to show up nicely. So I'm angling it. The, the front part is is higher than the back so we're going to kind of angle downward at an angle and then you can pull some of that shadow brown color into the water and there's going to be another smaller rock right alongside in the front so i'm going into the same dark color and like brown and uh, touch it black. I'm going to etch out some where I'm going to have rocks. I'm going to have a rock platform there. It's going to be kind of jutting out into the water a little bit. Got a smaller brush, but I'm just kind of etching out where I'm going to have uh, layers of boulders. You don't have to be real fussy now, but the angle that you're putting them in has to angle 
around the water. It's going to be kind of out in the middle right now, and then you'll angle in toward the, the back, the side of your canvas. See, I'm going to the to the right there. I'm angling it off, so it'll be a little wider on the bottom than on the top. Just laying some groundwork and where my stone path is going to go, too. Well, I've got, I'm in just uh, some white, titanium white. And a touch of phthalo blue. I'm going to put in some water with my fan brush, just the corner. Start at the top there and pull down. Very, very soft. You can do that until uh, you like, like it. Then take your brush. I've got a little one inch, one inch tapped in a little bit of white. There might be enough white on there. You can just tap the base of that and create um, some splashies in the water. And then take a fan brush or a small brush and just uh, draw, paint a little line underneath where the, the green water is there. So now I've got black, straight black, and I'm tapping in with my uh, palette knife the angle of the roof. And pulling in for the side side roof there, just a little bit. You can make that palette knife work for you. Then you can pull down for the sides of the the building there, so you get it the way you want it. If you want the the angle of the roof come down a little bit. Once you get it the way you want, then you can start adding a little color to it. I've got a little yellow ochre. And just pulling down lightly. Like the front of my cabin. And tapping a little bit. I'm making some boards. It looks like little logs. Get a little roll and you can pull straight down and then you can put it back into the yellow uh, yellow or um, yellow ochre and a little bit of brown and just tap those boards in. And you can make your roof the way you want, marble look. Bringing some of that color down in creating a window with a little bitty I put a little bit of black there and a touch of um, yellow ochre and I after I got done I stood back I was like wow that looks like a person in that window so I left it I left it alone <laughs> it looks rather it's different somebody's home <laughs> so I made another window and a door, solid black door, accenting the edges, using the small end of my knife. I think that's the part where I did the window. A little bit of yellow, show that there's light on in the house. And put a little more on the sides. Put a little chimney in there if you want. And there I made my little logs boards. So I think I'm pretty happy with that one.
put a tiny little window in the back. Okay, here I am working on the boulders. Adding uh, some yellow ochre, a touch of red. Just here and there, and now I'm taking a small brush and I'm just, just putting some darker areas in there to indicate some big boulders. They're lighter on the top and darker on the bottom half. And you can shape them however you want. Because no two are exactly the same. And the sunlight is hitting parts of those stones. So you don't be afraid to put a little bit of highlight on those. And same with making the path with your palette knife. Arch arching around to the shoreline. So now I'm going in with a fan brush. I'm going to start making some moss on that big old front boulder. And it's just tapping lightly and shaping downward. And they're so sporadic. They don't have to be exactly the same. You just start putting them in as many as you want. Moss is uh, well, it's pretty thick, so you'll want quite a bit on that. And you can put a light green, you know, like the the moss green, a little bit of uh, sap with uh, sap green with a little bit of yellow. Put down that, put it down first, and then I'm going now with over the top of that with a little lighter yellow. Oh, there's so many layers of color that that uh, goes into these things. It just. And the front, the little one in the front, I am, I started out with very, very light, but I, I did add some darker color in there because the sun really isn't hitting that little one as much as the others. So you'll notice my rock and the, the little rock in front will suddenly turn darker. It's because it really is in the shadow. And I'm putting a little bit of highlight with the red and a little bit of Van Dyke on the uh, the first big old rock back there. Just putting in angles. It's just, I'm not really, I'm using my fingers. It's, it's not really uh, precise. And it doesn't have to be. But I know I want to have that very edge of that big old rock. I want that highlighted pretty bright yellow because the sun the sun is really hitting that pretty heavy right there so you want to make sure you get that really bright and the rest is pretty much in the shadow so just mute mute them out a little bit so now I'm taking a palette knife with some white maybe a touch of yellow very very little yellow and I'm gonna start angling creating a uh, a little shoreline there Just pulling, keeping my angles straight across. I might arc them toward, how should I say, angling them not straight, but off center, going to the edge of the canvas on the right. And you'll see in a minute, it's like how the water, see how I'm going? I'm not going straight across. I'm kind of just angling. I'm going with the flow of water, put it that way. If you've ever, if you've ever seen uh, waves, they're not all straight across. They they do angle. The wind catches them, and, and they form their own pattern. And underneath the big boulder there, I'm just going to put a few water lines, something real heavy, and underneath the landscape rocks there, I'm going to put some uh, water lines under that. Okay, so I'm going into some yellow, little touch of white, a little brighter, a little brighter highlights there. Just uh, adding some shapes to those evergreens in the back here and there and it will pick up some of that color that we've already got down so you don't have to 
put a lot of color on that brush, just mainly a little bit of yellow, and it'll all come out at you. It'll just pick it up, the greens that, and the brush and what's down there, the sap green. Okay, and then the little one, the little pine tree next to uh, that boulder, hit that one pretty good. So now I'm putting in a little pier. Um, just drawing in by hand, just trying to remember. I didn't really etch anything out. I figured, well, I need a pier there. So I'm just starting at the base of the, um, the walkway, the rocks there that we arched up to the doorway at the cabin. I'm just doing little posts, one on each side of where the walkway is. And I'm going to bring up bring them out into the water once I get the planks angled out but I want to gauge don't want it too far out into the water it's not um, I want to make it a little more realistic I don't want a real huge uh, pier but it's going to be narrower in the front and wider to the back but I'm getting my posts in the posts are going in the water, the posts are, some posts are sticking up. And I'll be highlighting a little bit with a little bit of yellow and white on the tips of those posts too. And putting some water lines around the base on the water there where those the posts are. I brought the planks out now they they're looking pretty good just adding some water water uh, blinds underneath well it's getting kind of close I almost see to see a finished painting here oh boy I really like doing this one and I hope you learned something from this one with different variations of color and that um, if you want to see more of these, click the like button, follow me, share if you want. Like that. So, until next time. Happy painting. And God bless.